Uh, so let me do this. Okay. Um, so uh, this class will be uh, and within 13 weeks, and we have two sections. The first section uh, is uh, a class hosted by Professor Stavola. He is going to give you a lecture. Um, and this lecture will cover the fundamental physics, what dynamics, and the thermodynamics. So you will have a very huge class on Monday and uh, Wednesday. And after that, on Tuesday and Thursday, we have a recitation. I'm going to teach you the uh, homework solution and also some problems that um, need to be uh, solved online or um, some other questions about physics. And we have many um, examples to help you um, digest the physics. And if you have other questions, um, you can also uh, discuss with me on, uh, in the class. So my name is Joseph. Uh, I'm the fifth year graduate student. And I'm your teaching assistant for this master. Um, also, I'm a PhD candidate. Uh, at the Lehigh uh, Physics Department. And my email address is here. Uh, so if you have any question or uh, you have some uh, requirements and need to contact me, uh, you're welcome to send me email. Um, so we are going to give you the, uh, the class on Tuesday and Thursday. On Tuesday and Thursday, I have two sections. And um, one section is at here. Here. Um, one section is on the 7.55 to 8.45 uh, in the morning. And uh, another section is 9.20 to 10.10 10 a.m. And I teach the same thing for both of section. So you just need to attend either of this. And if you have any activity or the event uh, in the 9.20 um, to the 10.10, 10, uh, you can come to my first section. And um, also I have office hour on Thursday. Is um, The time is right after the my second section. It will be at the 10.10 10 to 11.10 uh, a.m. And if this time is not available um, and this, uh, this time doesn't work for you, uh, we can schedule an individual meeting. Um, in the recitation, I usually teach the homework solution or some physics idea that need to be derived and clearly. So I will spend the 15 minutes in the class talking about homework and physics and also some example. And to help you understand physics, I will do some simulation. Also, I download a few videos on the YouTube. And if you think this is helpful, um, I will uh, continue doing this one. Okay. So um, before we, um, we move on, I want to spend a couple of minutes uh, uh, introducing the, this class. Why do we need to learn physics? When we talk about physics, um, many of you were thinking this way, physics is very hard and the physics might be wrong or sometimes the physics is weird. So it's very common to have such question because um, if you just learn the physics as a first year, then you will find that everything in the physics um, doesn't make sense. So the first one is uh, it doesn't make sense because it's not correct. It contradicts my, um, my common knowledge. So we might have such question, is physics right? So there is a theory in the physics that says everything uh, is made up by atoms. The atoms are the elements of this world that is very small and the size of the atom is around, let me see, the size is around uh, <clears throat> 10 to negative 10 meter to 10 to the negative nine meter. So this is the size of the item. And you might say, how can we see this teeny element? 
um, even if you use optical microscope, you cannot see the atom. It's very, very small. And I think the limit of the optic microscope of the microscope is um, around 10 to the negative eight. This is a meter or 10 to the negative seven meter. So this is uh, uh, very small compared with the limit of the optical uh, microscope. So you might think, oh, this is not right because we cannot see atom. How can we believe everything is made by atom? So I think we need to use other experiment to confirm this theory is right. But from the first view of this theory, nobody thinks this is correct because you cannot see. And we said seeing is believing. If you can see, how can you believe it? So that's why people think physics is not right. So we don't want to spend so much time learning physics. Um, another critics, uh, critics about physics is, physics theory is weird. The conclusion is weird. So if you heard about Schrodinger's cat, you will find that everything in the quantum theory is weird. So the Schrodinger's cat said, if you have a cat in a box and there is some portion um, put beside the cat and this portion have some liquid and is going to poison uh, the cat, but um, the, the portion is sealed and there is 50% probability to open the uh, the portion and there is another 50% um, probability to close the portion. If the portion is closed, then the cat is alive. If the portion is open, then the cat will be poisoned and going to die. Then uh, quantum theory said, if you don't open the box, you never know this cat is alive or died. So the alive or a die or died the cat is uncertain, but in the reality, our normal theory said everything in the world is certain. It doesn't matter you open the box or not, but Schrodinger's cat said everything is uncertain. So this conclusion is very weird. Um, so Shakespeare said to be or not to be this is a question. And in the quantum theory, it said alive or died, this is a question. So a weird theory gave you some annoying idea that nobody wants to learn physics. So the third critic about physics is um, too difficult. So these guys make you feel the class. So there, uh, there is a group of people, they get together and have a meeting talking about the physics and uh, they write their theory into the textbook and ask everybody to learn. Then if you cannot pass the exam, you failed. So learning physics panics. So that's why many people get away from the physics. But why do we still need to learn physics? If you are engineering students, then this is a trivial question. But um, I think if you have not decided what major you're going to learn, it's very important to know uh, the importance of physics. So I want to show you some uh, applications. Why do we need to learn physics? Uh, because it's useful. First useful uh, area is uh, material science and the 3D printing machine. So 3D printing now is very popular because we want to use the machine to print any shape we want. So if we want to uh, print uh, a bottle or um, any glass or we want to print any structure that the normal machine cannot help us to build the 3D printing, the automatic 3D printing can finish or the complete all the project. So the idea is very easy. We have a low melting point material, low melting point. Here we said low, Actually, this compared with the melting point of the metal. Yeah. The metal um, has a very high um, melting point. It's around 
um, thousand degrees Celsius to two thousand degrees Celsius. It's very high. But for the plastic, um, the melting point is around uh, one hundred degrees Celsius to three hundred degrees Celsius. So when we increase the temperature above one hundred degrees Celsius, then it's getting the liquid. If there's a liquid, then the liquid can form any shape. If we have a mold, and this mold can give us any shape. And if we cool down um, the material, then the shape consolidates, then we get a solid. So this is uh, the basic idea, how we uh, use um, a low melting point material to doing the 3D printing. So the ink is the material. The tricky things is to find an ink. That ink has low melting point, and we can increase the temperature above the melting point to change the uh, the shape. Then we cool down to consolidate the shape. And the advantage of this uh, machine is that we can build any shape or any size. So we can go to a very small size, five hundred nanometer. That's around. Um, to the negative, uh, let me see, six, seven meter. So this is a very small and we can print um, any shape and very small. And also we can print a very large uh, building. So this is a constructor and we use the machine, uh, this machine uh, to get a building. And if we can use machine to build a building, then we don't need the labors. So every cost will be the material. Um, and we know um, the most important part is not the material, it, it is uh, the labor. So if it costs uh, one person and 200 per day, and it's need, it will need a, a year, then it will cost a lot of money. But if you only have a machine, then everything will be very cheap. So this is uh, one application in the, in the physics, in the material science. And another one will be the artificial intelligence, AI. And to get a very efficient AI, we need the computer to have a very good uh, uh, ability to do the computation. So the faster, the better. So we need to have a very fast computation. So we need the computer has um, many, many transistor. The transistor is uh, an element of the computer. So if um, in a computer, there are millions or the billions or trillions of transistor, then we will have a very good computation ability. But there is a limit for the uh, current computer. We know the transistor is made by silicon. Silicon here and the, the size of silicon is from 0.5 nanometer. So if this is the size of the silicon item, then what's the size of transistor? Yeah, the transistor so far uh, is around five nanometer or they want to go to four nanometer, but the normal is five to eight nanometer. So if we want to make a very small computer and we want to use uh, the cell phone and um, to include as many transistor as it can, we hope the transistor is small, but it cannot go uh, further small because there's a limit. The transistor cannot be smaller than the size of the item. So when we reach the, the limit, can we change the physics to make a computer? So this is a quantum computer. Uh, in the current computer, we have binary system. That's the signal one and the signal zero. We call the binary number, signal one and the signal zero. It represents um, the switch, switch on and the switch off. So we use switch on and the switch off to represent number one and number zero. The computer doesn't know number two. So there are only two numbers. 
And in the quantum computing, we don't use switch on or switch off. We use electron. The electron has spin. It will spin clockwise or counterclockwise, right? And so there are two spinning direction. We call the spin up, spin down. The spin down, spin up. So in this case, we can use these two direction of spin to represent signal one and the signal zero. So in this case, we change the silicon into the electron. And so this is how uh, things work. And we can use the electron to build a quantum computer. Then that quantum computer can increase the computation efficiency. So this is the physics in the quantum material. And we can use a quantum computer uh, to improve the artificial intelligence. This is uh, another application. One more application is to find alien, right? Uh, physics um, start from uh, the telescope. When we use telescope to watch the universe, to watch a star, the planet, the satellite, then we get the, uh, the physics from the universe. And the question is, can we find the living thing outside of the earth? Here, we need to use new um, telescope or a sort of new uh, observatory we call LIGO. Here, this is LIGO, the light um, or the laser, not light, hold on. This is laser interference. Go is gravitational wave. Station or wave, and O is observatory. So this is a new telescope to help us detect gravitational wave. Gravitational wave was first detected in the 2015. That's a breakthrough. Before that, we only know the gravitational wave exists in the Einstein's theory but there's no experiment to confirm the Einstein theory. But after we first detect the gravitational wave, we find uh, the collision of the black hole. This is a collision of the black hole. And the collision uh, released a huge energy of gravitational wave and was detected by the LIGO. This is the first detection in 2015. And uh, another news about uh, black hole is in the 2019, if I don't believe it wrong. Uh, people use telescope and to detect the, the center of the galaxy and they find there should be a black hole in the center um, of this ring. This is a donut shape. The donut actually are the, are the stars moving in the orbit of the, uh, of the black hole. And in the center, you cannot see is a black hole. It's very small but the gravitational force is very, very large. So by developing this observatory, the purpose is that can we use gravitational wave to, um, to find something new in the universe that cannot be found by the telescope. The telescope is made by the optical system, but the gravitational wave cannot be seen and black hole cannot be seen either. So, this is a new observatory to help us uh, find the new matter in the universe. And hopefully, we can use the data to analyze if this planet or the star um, is suitable for the living things. Then this is uh, the chance to find the alien. Okay, and this is a physics in the in the universe and. There is another application called biophysics. Biophysics actually is um, a re research area that applies the principles of physics and chemistry and to the biological system to understand the function of cell, the function of organ tissues, or the function of the DNA protein or other living things. So this is very popular because of the pandemic. So, um, because of this pandemic, people want to know how virus affect the healthy cells, 
how the virus um, attack the human body and how the virus make the human body unfunctional. So if uh, we can use the biophysics to understand um, the, this whole process of the virus, then if we can block um, the infecting process, then we can uh, treat this disease. So there is an example to show you how the coronavirus infect the healthy cell. Um, there are many uh, protein on the membrane we call the receptor. And if the virus and the receptor match, then uh, the virus will um, stay on the surface of the membrane. So if the virus stay on the surface, then the virus will release uh, the DNA or RNA. This is a legacy of the virus. And this DNA and RNA um, replicate and in the cell and make a lot of copies. And eventually they will um, make many protein cell, the core and the uh, RNA DNA. And then these things will organize to get a new virus. This new virus will release from the dye cell and to um, infect other healthy cells. So this process, if we can block any process, if we can block um, the detection or we can block uh, the, uh, the replication or we can block the release, then we can treat this disease. So this is how we are studying now so far to treat the coronavirus. Okay, and another thing and is about communication. And this, uh, these days, I think if you have a new cell phone, um, um, Apple or the Samsung or uh, Amazon, they have many new phones and they also have advertisement for the 5G. So what's the meaning of 5G? This is the fifth generation. So, um, the fifth generation's a signal gave you very high speed communication or uh, the signal communication. And if we go to the 20 years ago, we have 3G. 3G actually gave you a very low speed and the speed is 384 kilobytes uh, per second. And if you have very uh, high quality movie, you want to download through the internet, you need 26 hours, more than one day to get a HD Netflix movie. But after two years, there is a fourth generation and the fourth generation increases speed to 100 megabytes. And if you want to download the same size of the movie, it takes six minutes to finish the downloading. But now if we have the 5G, the speed goes to the 10 gigabytes and it only needs four seconds to download an HD movie. So this is very fast. And the Elon Musk have a Starlink plan. They uh, released this plan last year and he said he want to uh, launch thousands of satellites, this part of satellite uh, to cover the earth. And if this satellite is on the sky, it will generate signals, 5G signal, and transform the signal to the people on the ground. The benefit of this, um, this project is that now the signal generation um, are, on, are all on the ground, but the earth is round. So if you have a signal generation on the ground here, you cannot um, get a signal here because uh, the surface is curved. And uh, um, if the signal change, it has to uh, go to this way and you cannot get a curved signal. But if the generation, signal generator is on the sky, it's very easy to get the signal from, from the top, right? So this is a very um, excited um, process or the project and uh, we are going to use electromagnetics system um, to do the communication, how to increase the speed, how to increase the efficiency, and how to increase the cybersecurity. Okay. 
And so this is uh, um, the application so far in the physics and different region um, need different uh, disciplines and physics is not trivial. And we need to use physical theory to understand how things work and how can we make innovation or to get the second generation. And before we can, we get to this class, uh, we have missing on no. So um, 300 years ago, Newton is the first guy um, to summarize the physical theory. Before Newton, people don't have a general idea about physics, but after Newton, um, we know the dynamics and we have Newton theory to explain the motion, to explain the optics and to use calculus and to build a model and understand how the world um, proceed. So there's a word that nature and the nature's laws laid hid in night. And God said, let Newton be, and all was light. But after uh, 200 years, uh, when uh, Albert Einstein was born, he put forward new theory, the specific Gener uh, specifics relativity and general relativity and also the thermodynamics about the Brownian motion. And we find we don't understand many things. So the law said that S and B and all turns dark. We have many regions unknown and we are going to explore the new knowledge. And if we have the new theory to explain the new phenomenon, then we can use a new theory um, to get a new application. So if I use a circle to represent uh, the knowledge we know today, that's a circle. And out of the circle, that's the knowledge we don't know so far. And after we finish our primary school, we learn uh, many things. And I draw a green circle to represent what we learn from the primary school. So this are all the knowledge we learned from primary school. Then after we graduate from high school, we learn more. So we learned the yellow region. That's the knowledge from high school. Then we pick up a major. We come to Lehigh and the Lehigh give you the major and you learn all the things about the major. So the physics one gave you um, all the physics in the dynamics and the thermodynamics and get you to the border of the knowledge. So you reach here after you finish this class and you reach the border. And then the next thing is to expand this border by doing a little bit breakthrough. So if this is your contribution to make a breakthrough, then you are qualified to get a degree or your bachelor's degree. So if you have a thesis, you do experiments or you do simulation, or you have some internship and find something new and um, expand the border, then that's a degree. So this is how we use this class to teach you um, in the physics. So at the end, I want to um, um, emphasize uh, this in my class hour and my office hour if you come late. So I end off uh, my introduction. The next few uh, minutes, I want you to introduce yourself. Here, <clears throat> let me use uh, 